Good morning and welcome. Uh, we're speaking to Steve Ministeri, uh, part of our numerous interviews this morning at the Dallas Convention Center where the State Republican Party of Texas is gathering, having its annual or biannual uh, meeting and convention. Uh, my name is Ben Streisand. I'm statewide chairman for Americans for Prosperity. And uh, Steve, thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, you're welcome. Good to be with a fellow conservative. Uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about your background and why you decided to run for party chair. Well, Ben, I've been active for 38 years in the party, and I think that there's not been a, a single time that it's been more important for us to be involved because I believe Barack Obama is the greatest threat to our freedom in our lifetime. And I think we all have a moral obligation to get involved, and I think the best way for me to get involved would be as a state party chair. Now, you've been in uh, around, and I think we've met on several occasions, yes, but uh, you've been involved in Republican politics for many years. 1972. Tell, tell us how you started, and where you're from Houston, and, yes, and what you do for a living. Well, I'm retired, but I started in 1970. You're too young to be retired. <laughs> Not retired from life, but just retired. I mean, we, we've got a battle ahead of us, so we can't be retired from that. But uh, in 1972, my mother, who was the secretary of her Young Republican Club in 1948, and she hates me to say that because she says people will figure out her age, but I tell her when they look at me and realize I'm the fourth youngest, they, they could probably figure that out. But she was involved in, in 1948, and she was always involved in the Republican Party politics after that. She was a supporter of Barry Goldwater, if that tells you something. And she was a member of the Village Republican Club in, in Harris County, Texas, and we had a dynamic Harris County chairman by the name of Nancy Paul that just fired her up. And so she was a block captain, and in 1972 she said, would you like to come out and help go door to door with me for Hank Grover? Uh, and I loved it, so I said I wanted to do some more. So she would drop me off at the Nixon Tower phone banks, uh, and then she'd pick me up. And I would—I was too young to drive, but I would be working the phone banks. And then in high school, I formed a memorial, a conservative club. And then I got acquainted with a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan, and I called Ray Barnhart, the Harris County chairman, and he got me involved in the Reagan campaign. And by the way, I'm, I'm happy to announce that Michael Reagan endorsed me yesterday. Uh, as did Ray Barnhart, the uh, former state chairman of the Reagan campaign. So you have a long history. You've been a delegate many years, attended numerous state conventions and national conventions, I believe, as both a delegate. Uh, I went to my first state convention as an alternate delegate in 1976. Uh, we got a whole group of people from our high school, uh, and we showed up, and they didn't want us to be delegates because we weren't on the list, so we actually went out and campaigned, and we were able to substitute our own names, and it was a great lesson in civics because the SREC race was decided by one vote, and that was decided by my group of high school students, and the person that won that was Jerry Smith, so I like to tell him that he wouldn't have ever gone on to be Harris County Chairman and wouldn't be gone on to be on the Court of Appeals if it wasn't our SEC vote. A little bit of an example exaggeration, but it was a good lesson in civics for us. And if you just join us, we're talking to Steve Ministeri, who's running for Republican Party Chair. Uh, we're live from the Dallas Convention Center, where the state Republican Party is gathered for its biannual meeting. Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about the challenges you think the party is facing. I know finances have been a major issue in this race for uh, county party chair. Yeah, but I think we face a broader challenge, which is first we have to recognize why it is we lost the White House and we lost the Congress in the first place. And I think as a party we lost our way, that we actually moved away from our conservative principles instead of embracing them. And I think what the American people were telling us is that they were tired of everybody, including us. And we have to learn that lesson. So I think before we talk about finances, before we talk about organization, we need to talk about values and our principles and realize that to some extent, you know, the leadership of our party let us down. And I'm not talking about anybody specifically, I'm just saying generally I think there was a sense that if we had been more true to our policies, we wouldn't have got Barack Obama in the first place. So that's the first thing we have to do. Organizationally and financially, you know, we just should not accept deficit spending in our party. And we need to, I think, get back to the way I started, which is grassroots organizing on a block-by-block -block basis. Well, this is obviously, this is a race for, for state party chair. Yes. So I, I got to 
pin sure. you down a little bit. Tell us about your specific plans for the party if you should win on Saturday, which is when the vote is. Yeah, and I'm going to put a plug here from my website, steveministry.com, where I have very, very detailed financial and grassroots plans. But on finances, what I think we need to do is over time, we need to move away from dependence on telemarketing and direct mail. There's a little disagreement over what the percentage is. I think it's the uh, mid-70s. Uh, 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 Miss Adams and her people say it's the mid-60s that you're taking for the fundraisers and giving. But whether we're taking 60% or 70% is really irrelevant. The point is that it's undisputable that a majority of the money, when you use telemarketing and direct mail, now go to the fundraisers. It's because everybody's doing it. So what I want to do is get involved with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and say, will you sign up for $8.35 a month? Do it on a recurring charge. And if you do that, we promise we'll take you off our list. We won't send you a mailing and we won't call you. Uh, we have 63 to 73,000 contributors at any one time. If we can just get 10% of those people to sign up for that, we will actually net more money than we did last year. That's only part of the problem. Another thing is you have to go to more lower cost dollar fundraising, such as VIP receptions, dinners, things of that nature. And then the cheapest way to raise money is to get on the telephone and just call directly. And as a state party chairman, I would tell my staff, get me a list of everybody that has given $500 or more to the party in the last three years that has not given in the last 12 months, and I'm just going to call them directly, just like I called over 3,000 delegates personally over the last two months. Uh, a, a, as you know, or I, I think you would agree, uh, you know, chairman of the state Republican Party, I think the, and see if you agree with this, the, the, the big job is to elect Republicans. So uh, how do you feel the party has done, and what would you do differently to help elect more Republicans if you should win? Yeah, we've got away from grassroots organizations. We don't have the state party presently actually organizing statewide block walks, which is what how I started. Uh, I had uh, the unfortunate experience of working in Iowa for two months and seeing what it was like to go against the Obama machine. They are very well organized. They use union, they use young people. They have a great turnout program. This is what they do, and I think we need to be doing it. They go in the beginning of early voting, and they go door to door with their lists, and they encourage people to vote during early voting. Then they come back in the middle and at the end of early voting to check off whether you voted or not, and then they have a final push before the election. What I specifically would do would be to have, first of all, use volunteers. Get TFRW, get the Young Conservatives of Texas, get college Republicans, bring them over to the headquarters, and let's start calling our precinct chairman and ask him to give us the names of people that attended their precinct conventions that they know are the most active in their area, and we'll set up a phone bank to call those people and ask them, would they participate in a state wide block walk. And I think it's unrealistic for us to organize it the way I'd want to in five months, but I think we can get three block walks done, and then you coordinate with the local county chairmen and the local candidates to actually distribute their literature and make sure we get our vote out. I want to ask you uh, one more question, because I know this has been a, an issue for uh, delegates uh, for a long time, one of the, uh, another contentious issue, and that is whether or not uh, candidates for Republican office should have to endorse or support the party platform or the major planks of the party platform or whether or not uh, they should be required to state whether or not they agree with various planks or disagree with substantial parts of the Republican Party platform. How do you feel about well, that? That's an excellent question. First of all, let me just say as a premise, I believe there's no purpose in having a party unless you stand for something. So unless we're going to stand on principles, there's no, there's no reason to even have a party. I think it is a reasonable request to ask candidates to fully disclose where they stand. I think that's true in the general election. So we need to make sure that we have a way to disseminate information so it's clear that every where every candidate stands. Now after that point, then you let the primary voters decide, but they can only make an informed decision. So. I personally think the best way to do it is to say, maybe on either the state website or county websites, to ask all the candidates to put up there what their positions are. Yeah. Steve, thanks for joining us. You're we welcome. really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to tell our listeners and the viewers uh, who are listening all over the state of Texas live? Yeah, I would say this. Whether myself or Tom Meckler or Kathy Adams is elected state chairman, we're going to have a state chairman in the next 24 hours. The most important thing is to recognize that the differences between ourselves are so small compared to the differences between ourselves and the Democrats. And we have the most important issue facing in our lifetime. We 
we have to get back the White House before the damage is too great. So our own personal differences are so small in comparison to what the value of our country is. Steve, thank you very much. That's Steve Ministeri, candidate for State Republican Party Chair. We're live from the Dallas Convention Center where the Texas Republican Party is holding its biannual meeting. We'll be back in a minute with uh, State Representative Wayne Christian and Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst.